Hi there, and welcome to this video about upgrading from classic SharePoint notifications to the modern SharePoint framework application customizers. Just to set the context, in the SharePoint added model, we used to rely on the sp.ui.notify or sp.ui.status set of types, which allowed us to create dialog windows, notifications and status bar messages in the classic UI of SharePoint on-premises or SharePoint online. It was a model based on JavaScript and JavaScript object model, and it is nowadays a kind of an old development model. In the new SharePoint framework, which targets the modern UI of SharePoint Online, you can easily rely on the SharePoint framework application customizer extensions, as well as on TypeScript and eventually on React, to build really powerful solutions and really integrated solutions integrated with the modern UI of SharePoint Online. So, if you want to do that, there is no conversion tool, so you cannot simply convert your already existing and old SharePoint added model solutions to the new modern development technique of SharePoint Framework, but you will have to create a new SharePoint Framework component. It can be a web part or an extension, and typically, if you want to replace the notification or the status area, it will be an extension of type Application Customizer. You can choose to rely on React to have a better experience, and you can eventually also rely on the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, which will give you a really nice and fully integrated experience for your end users. So, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can transition from the status bar and notifications of the classic model to the SharePoint Framework application customizers. So, imagine that you want to create a notification message in the modern UI of SharePoint Online. The final effect will be something like the following message that you can see right here, where you can click on the close button and hide the message. So, how can we do that with SharePoint Framework and the modern UI? First of all, you need to create a SharePoint Framework solution. So, you need to run your at Microsoft SharePoint and you have to provide a name for your solution. You have to choose to create an extension. The extension will be of type Application Customizer, which are the extension that allocate an, an area in the top or lower part of the screen, like we just seen in the demo. So it would be an Application Customizer, and the name could be Notification Header, just for the sake of making an example. By running the scaffolding tool, uh, all the uh, code will be automatically generated and uh, the uh, uh, NPM packages will be installed in your solutions. It will take a while, so I will fade out and fade in uh, just to speed up the recording of this video. Now that the solution has been scaffolded and all the NPM packages have been installed in the target solution, we can start working on our actual implementation. So first of all, uh, I want to rely on React in the development of my solution. So I'm going to install the NPM packages of React. So I will say NPM install React and React DOM, dash dash save to save the packages in the package.json file. And then I will do the same for the types of React. So I will also execute the npm install of at types of React, and the same for React DOM, and dash dash save dash dev to save those packages in the developer dependencies in my package.json file of the project. Now we can run Visual Studio Code and see what we have got generated. So go code dot, and this is the uh, solution generated in Visual Studio Code. We can see in the source folder that we have an extension subfolder where we have the notification header subfolder. In this one, we have a TypeScript file which defines uh, our extension. First of all, you can see that uh, in this uh, file we have uh, a class 
called Notification Header Application Customizer. So the name that we choose for our extension followed by Application Customizer, which extends the base application customizer of T, where this T is this interface which defines any optional settings, configuration settings for the extension. And then in the on init method of the extension, we simply have a very basic implementation, which has been scaffolded by the human generator tool. And here we simply have a dialogue alert. So there will be a dialogue dialog window showing that we are in the uh, application customizer in which we are. Moreover, we have a JSON file, a manifest file for the extension, which defines that we have our extension of type application customizer and a few more settings about uh, uh, the application customizer itself. Now we need to create uh, the real solution. And in order to do that, we are going to rely on a component called message bar, which is provided by the Fluent UI of Microsoft. So by the rich set of components, React components that we can reuse in our solutions. So in order to do that, let me switch to a solution that I have already uh, prepared. And in this solution, we are going uh, to see how you can implement such an extension. So first of all, I created a components subfolder in the notification header, and I created a notification uh, subfolder for a notification uh, React component. You see this notification.tsx file that I created. This is a file which extends react.component and which does have a, an interface to define the properties and the state. In the properties, we have a show message boolean, which will instruct the React component to show or not to show the message in the status bar. And then there will be the actual message as a string. Plus in this state, we still have the show message, which will be used to dynamically update the status of the notification message in the UI. Then using the message bar, the message bar button, and but message bar button type uh, taken from the Fluent UI React lib, here we have uh, in the constructor of our uh, component that we initialize the show message with the value provided by the initial setting uh, of the React component through the properties. And then in the render method, if we need to show the message, then we render a message bar control of Fluent UI where we define as the text, the message that we find in the properties of the React component, and which will also have in the actions a message bar button, which will simply on click change the status of the show message bar. So it will make it false so that it will make the message to disappear. And this is the close button. And simply the show message bar will set the state to the new value provided as the input argument. Then once you have done that, in the application customizer, which has been slightly reviewed, you will have to import the notification component and the interface for its properties, as well as in the on init method, rather than just showing a dialog window like the auto-generated code does, we actually have a render placeholders method that we implemented. This is an asynchronous method, which will return just a promise of void. And in this one, we can start uh, trying to get uh, a reference to the placeholder that we want to replace with our custom UI element. So using the context of SharePoint framework, uh, you can talk with the placeholder provider, which is a component available in the context, uh, which will give you the try create content uh, method. And the try create content will allow you to provide if you want to get a placeholder for the top area of the screen or for the bottom area of the screen, and also to define what to do on disposal of the custom component that you will eventually uh, implement and provide in the top or bottom area of the screen. So the result of this method will be, if any, because it is a try create content, if any will be an instance of the placeholder reference right here in a variable that I defined in my component as uh, placeholder content. Then if I don't have a placeholder content, it means that we are not in a context of being able to render the application customizer. Otherwise, we can simply create an instance of our notification component and we can render through React DOM that component inside the DOM element of the placeholder. So simple as that. 
and in the uh, handle dispose, we will simply do the unmount of the component rendered in the placeholder. And just for the sake uh, of logging something, we log that we did the uh, disposal. So this is a quite simple solution through which uh, you can easily implement a notification message in the UI of a modern page in SharePoint Online. Here you can find additional links if you want to dig more into the topics that we covered. And like always, thank you for watching this video.